Gaelic football on Off The Ball. With AIB, proud sponsors of the GAA Senior Football Championship. Check out hashtag the toughest for more. Now you're welcome back. We're talking GEA and we are down to our final four. So Dublin against Monaghan will take place on Saturday the 15th of July. Half past five kick, uh, oh, kick off. Jeez, that'd be a sacrilege. Throw in. Half past five throw in for uh, that one. Kerry against Derry is Sunday the next day, the 16th at four o'clock. And on the Saturday, by the way, that is a double header before Dublin against Monaghan down against Meath is at three o'clock that is the Talchin Cup final so uh, bumper Saturday at Crow Park if you're uh, so inclined very happy to say we have Colin Boyle four time All-Star with us hello hello Joe how are you yeah I'm great Darren O'Sullivan All-Ireland winner with Kerry is there as well hey Darren Hey Joe, how are things? Yeah, good. So uh, our quarter final weekend has come and gone. We had two statement performances, as they're generally being described by uh, Dublin and Kerry. We had Monaghan doing what Monaghan do. Conor McManus very much to the fore. We're very painful for Armagh. We had Derry in a very controlled kind of a way, beating Cork, and then Mayo and Tyrone with lots of soul searching to do. I think that about the gist, Darren. Yeah, I think so. Um... I'll admit I didn't see um, Kerry winning so easily. I didn't see Dublin winning so easily either. Um, but yeah, it was it was an interesting weekend. Um, I think every team will come away with ifs and buts from an Armagh point of view. I think uh, just from meeting a few supporters on the way out, I think there's a lot of frustration there. Um, Monaghan, like you said, doing what Monaghan do and McManus doing what McManus does. Um is probably as big a story as Kerry's win or Dublin's win, to be honest. I just think Monaghan, they're just incredible, really, mm-hmm. for making a fool out of everyone predicting results. Um, yeah, it was uh, it was a great win. I think Derry and Cork was, was kind of just going through the motions a bit. There wasn't much life in it. But, uh, yeah, some interesting results. Colm, let's start with Dublin Mayo then. And... Mm-hmm. I mean, to just for a second, I'd be curious for your thoughts on the first half because the first half felt like a really interesting um, contest. Obviously, the game was dead five or six minutes into the second half. But I presume you're you're kind of watching through a Mayo lens column. And in that first half, there were a lot of good things happening for Mayo. The halftime stats were basically even on every front. Wides, mm. chances created. In fact, the only stat that where there was a bit of a difference was uh, possession. Mayo had 55% possession. And if you looked at their attack, Aidan O'Shea against Davy Byrne was going pretty well. A few high balls in, caught and won and, and assists. And there were a few turnovers on his part, sure. But I mean, he, he was a very live threat and he was winning his fair share of ball. Ryan O'Donoghue against Owen Merchant was another matchup going very well for Mayo. And again, he was hoovering up some really good direct balls into him. Tommy Conroy on Mick Fitzsimons, another matchup going very well. Fitzsimons mm-hmm. did not enjoy that pace. You remember at one stage, James McCarthy dragging them. Um, Conroy down and getting that yellow on the end line very early on probably breaking even at midfield and, and, and like I said better on the possession front and then at the other end Colin Basquel was having a good day against O'Hora they made the change on about 31-32 minutes and Hessian came on uh, McBride was doing reasonably well on Con. so like that like as a brief smattering geez, that's kind of where it, a lot of things going quite well here for Mayo Oh, absolutely, Joe. And like before the game, I was just I had the mindset we need to get through the first half still in this game. And when you go through everything that you just mentioned there, like if you talk um, next day at, at, on, Saturday, on Sunday morning, this is how it's going to plan out up to half time. He would have been absolutely delighted with that. I think actually they would have been slightly frustrated at half time with the way they had played for the first 25 minutes that they found themselves a point down. I think you mentioned the three boys inside there, Ryan. Ryan kicks five points, three frees. One of them is frees, sorry, two frees. Uh, one of them frees against himself. Tommy Conroy has two scores and, and, and two fouls as well that frees get kicked from. Aiden gets a free and gets an assist for Tommy Conroy. All, all our eight scores in that first 25 or 23 minutes are all from the three boys causing havoc. And I think the key to that was we were using them so efficiently and it came from our kick out, which I was really afraid of, especially in that first half when Dublin pressed us. We were getting the win the long kick out and it was a straight ball inside one, two, three passes bang and away, and away we went and we were getting the scores and it just felt like we were up and running but I thought the warning signs were there Joe in the last 10 minutes of the first half I thought Dublin got a grip of us 
Uh, granted, we have that goal chance from Gordon, or Jordan Flynn, and I'm still not 100 sure if it's a goal or not. The more I see it, the more I'm, I'm, I'm unsure of was there an actual foul there. But we needed that. We absolutely needed that when we were on top because Dublin come straight it down and get an equaliser but you just felt they almost get a goal before half time I'm, I'm thinking myself at half time Mayo need to come out now and be strong because we haven't scored in about 13, 14, 15 minutes and if that goes on another 5, 10 minutes you'll see the energy start to drain from the Mayo players and obviously we all know about Dublin and the third quarter because that's that's where they win games traditionally and it was an interesting Joe I might be completely over reading into things but Dublin as long as I've ever played against them and as long as I'm watching them they're always out second at half time and was, I don't know was it something that they planned or Mayo were holding back but Dublin were actually out first at half time and I just thought it was a small thing but they were out ready to go and Mayo players kind of half ambled out in positions and a couple of them weren't even ready for the throw and by the time David Goff throws up the ball and straight away Dublin have set the mark of the start second half get up win the throw and score from Mannion and that's their intent. And Mayo just, they just got the heat on Mayo, hit the 1 3 in the first 15, or sorry, the first five minutes in the second half, and the game was over. But I think I think the warning signs were there, like I said, from the first 10 or the last 10 minutes in the first half. Okay. Darren, um, I did feel watching the first half, like wherever you were watching, there was like a just a solitary tear rolling down your eye at some of the direct football being played by both sides this is what you've been waiting for for a long time so the first half in terms of a contest and the style of play was I think everyone everything we were looking for all weekend um, what was your reading of that first half we had the kind of column through that Mayo lens how, how did you see it? Yeah, I'd agree with a lot of it and a lot of this the good play that Mayo had and some of the great scores they got were very unlike Mayo from the last couple of years in terms of it was really good direct kicking I actually think for Pascal's goal I think Eamon Fitzmaurice is actually in the middle of saying "Yeah, it, it's amazing kick the ball into the final <laughs> third and scores will come next thing Pascal catches it in some back of the net but Connors right to, it was one, two, three passes score it's it's impossible to mark that um, we named out the three boys Aidan O'Shea Tommy Conroy and um, I don't know who inside you cannot mark these players when the ball is coming in fast and it's funny that obviously Dublin got on top Mayo stopped kicking it and two of the best performers in the second half were James McCarthy and um, Pitt Simons for Dublin so yeah look, I think Mayo are going to come away with a lot of regrets I think um, they showed a lot of progress this year but I just think look Mix A I think has done really well I think they're trying to build something new but I do think taking off Aiden Shea so early in the second half was a was a strange call it wasn't he wasn't having it all his own way but he he must have had two or three assists he got a point he was causing trouble and at, at the very least he's a plan B you lump it in on top of him because and I'm saying it there's not a man in the country that can mark him if he gets half decent ball and he's very unselfish he'll win a ball pop it off you throw a ball in on top of him and the goalie's coming out I don't fancy being that goalie um, so a couple of changes I think I think it was a bit of a panic but Dublin came out for the second half and they just upped the empty and they're very hard to stop and I think Mayo against Cork they conceded I think it was 1-5 on the trot they need to learn to stop the rut um, yes they're there's a lot of players new players with that Mayo team they are in transition as well so that has to be taken into account the second goal a more experienced defender is going down on that ball and getting fouled and it's a free out um, so there's a lot of ifs and buts coming away from Mayo they'd be disappointed with I suppose it's a collapse but at the end of the day I think it was 23 minutes at 8 points and it was 47 by the time they got their ninth. that's too long we've, we've said it before they go to too many stretches long stretches where they don't get a score you need that bit of cuteness win it buy a free slow it down stop the momentum they just didn't stop and in fairness to Dublin they were bringing fellas off the bench who had so many medals but they looked like they were looking for their first the hunger, the intent, the intensity and you look at the aggression on Brian Fenton, a fella known for being cool and calm. They look like fellas on a mission. Um, Kilkenny starting on the bench, came on making an impact, making turnovers when the game was well won. I think one of the last players of the game, I think it's Conor Callan driving the boys on from behind to say, keep going on. Um, so yeah, look, I think 
I think they startled Mayo with the way they started the second half and they were just they didn't stop the momentum it, it's hard to stop it and then obviously the changes they made I think um, I think if Mick Stay had his time back for this game he probably would have left on someone like Aidan Shea mm. um, and Colin mentioned it taking off Aidan O'Shea while the Dubs are bringing on McCaffrey McCaffrey's getting a boost you're getting a boost by bringing on um, Killian O'Connor but at the other and then you have Speedy Gonzalez coming on so that kind of nullifies that well, I, I would tend to agree like it was quite telling that the hill is cheering McCaffrey coming on and then they see Aidan O'Shea going off and it's another cheer Colm I thought it was very strange I, like I thought initially oh god is he injured because he was it was really like you can't put what happened in the first five six minutes of the second half at his door not the problem is Joe we weren't getting the ball up there if it's a case that there's four or five balls going in and they've been coming out just as quick then yeah you might be looking at a change there I think for me I would have been Tommy Connery out to a left and just get a bit of legs around the four position and get him on the ball out there where he might be able to run at the middle defence but you're bringing on Kill- or sorry the, the Dublin defence obviously you're bringing on Killing, and what Killing is he's, he's obviously a scorer but he's a brilliant kick passer as well and I'd say to Darren He's the type of man, if he can get on the 40, he can deliver that long diagonal to Aiden that you might be looking for to get you back into the game. Because at that stage, I think it's six, seven points down when this change is made. We are getting a small bit desperate. So I think we need it to, you know, just play, <laughs> I don't know, take our chances and just go all out, go for it. Because at the end of the day, what else have we to lose at that stage? Yeah. So that, that second half period, because I guess we're looking at it from a Mayo vantage point here a little bit, mm-hmm. but. The um, half starts with James McCarthy, who is like half greyhound, half gazelle, um, doing his thing off throwing and setting up Paul Mannion. Then Pascal scores a brilliant point on the right hand side, cuts in onto his left, and it just sails over. And it's just, you know, he scored 1 2 at that stage. He's in phenomenal form. Then Fenton, who had been quiet ish, was never going to stay quiet ish for the full 70. Mm. He uh, fists over a point on 39 minutes. And it was at that. <laughs> I mean, Eamon Fitzmaurice had an, uh, an exceptional uh, a couple of interventions. It was as Dublin had a sideline. Fitzmaurice said, I would not be surprised if Mayo go short with their next kick out so they can keep possession. And then bang, the goal. So um, twice, every time Fitzmaurice uh, <laughs> intervened, um, Dublin seemed to score a goal. The, uh, I don't know. Look, it's easy to criticise Sam Callan. You understand what he's trying to do, Darren. Um, Dublin are so sharp at this point and so in it and they take advantage that was kind of awesome that was vintage Dublin that that five six minutes yeah look, we mentioned it off air myself and Cullum to be honest I don't think it mattered who they were playing um, when they get a run up like that they're hard to stop and the only way to stop them is stop the game and we said it earlier look Callan there people players try and do that all the time I think some more experience would have gone down it, won the free, bought the free. The ref always gives it there. Yeah. Um, but it just seems to be, they need they lack that bit of experience. I think around the place, just to, you have to stop the rut. The, like these boys were just coming wave after wave after wave. Mayo couldn't get their hands on the ball when they did. Dublin's intensity just went through the roof. Um, they came out like a different team, like a different attitude, um, like. To be honest, the first half, I would have gone in and said, geez, may or unlucky, they're a point down. They should be, they're more in control of this game. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was, it was vintage Dublin. Like I said, it looked like they flicked the switch. They looked like a team who, they looked like, ang- they looked like angry players, to be honest. They looked like they're out to prove a point. I suppose have been written off. There's a lot been said about bringing the, the, the boys back, the Mannions, the McCaffreys, um, Cluxton and Goal. So, Look, they've quietly gone about their business up to now, but they definitely explored in that second half. It is becoming apparent, I think, uh, Colm, the likes of Cluxton coming back, Mannion coming back, McCaffrey. There's probably a sense it could well be Desi's last year. And everything we hear from various Dublin pundits who have a great knowledge of the Dublin scene is that there isn't a... Uh, like an extraordinary batch right behind them that there could be a lean-ish couple of years by Dublin standards admittedly but a lean-ish period nonetheless it does increasingly feel like they've just got the band back together and they're giving it this massive push to win one more and they had the, it does have a real last dance quality to it oh yeah absolutely that was, that was exactly my thoughts last week that John I was actually on with you the day Cluxton came back against Louth um, yeah. that evening I think, I think you said it was a, a dreadful idea <laughs> <laughs> if only it turned out to be dreadful of course it was always going to work wasn't it? 
job. It was always going to work for them. I was very unsure of it at that time. I didn't think that I was sending out the right message to the group. But now you look at it and you look how composed he was with his kickouts the last day. And Mayo actually did quite well on their own kickouts. But it always looked like it was a bit of a struggle. You flip that the opposite way and how comfortable Dublin looked at getting their kickouts out and the confidence in the players out the field of, of having Slux and goal and knowing that they're making their runs and he's going to put it exactly where they're running to. Like It just gives them a completely different dimension whatsoever and like, it's such such an attitude to have and the experience how cool he is. He hasn't received a goal yet during the championship. I think that's just... You know, it just sums up, you know, the influence he's having in that dressing room. I think he's just raised the levels of, of everyone there. That, not that he probably needed to, but maybe he did over the last couple of years. Maybe he's exactly what they needed and the two boys come back in. But it certainly looks like everything has fallen into place for them. Because I always think of that COVID final, Darren, where Dublin brought Mannion off the bench before he had his um, sojourn away and he was really decisive. And you think yesterday... Kilkenny I don't know is Kilkenny not quite fit or what the issue was there but you've Mannion in and then like McCaffrey off the bench I sort of feel like McCaffrey has you know 10 gears and he got up to maybe 7 or 8 yesterday just doing a little road test um, getting ready for the motorway over the next couple of weeks yeah like like he seemed to be like that only going through the going through the gears I think he, he's he's threatening to take off but he's not quite ready um and like that, it was a prime prime time to bring him on. They had all the momentum, all the running he was going to be doing was going to be on his terms. He wasn't going to be chasing a whole pile. Like it, it all played into Desi's hands, really. Even the, like we talked about the first score, the second half, Mannion had been quite quiet in the first half. And he ended up getting the ball nice at the tip over. And all of a sudden, he's a different player for the second half. We talk about McCarthy, you know, he stopped the second half and he's a different player. Um, but yeah, it does have that feeling that this is, and I think it was actually Paddy Andrews with yourself before the game, that that's the feeling. Get yeah. these boys back. And the other part of it is probably with a lot of the younger lads that are on the panel that are going to be there for the next 10 years or so, it's, it's let, let's see how these boys do it. This is what they do at training. This is why they're early. This is all the extra stuff that they do. These boys have six, seven, eight, all out of the medals. This is what they do. And it's a kind of go, you have one last couple of months here to take their example if you're going to drive it forward. So um, I would have been like, Colin, my, my question to Crooks and decision as well. Um, like a lot of people, I suppose, Todd has sent out the wrong message as well, but it's a good job I'm not in management. <laughs> I'd be wrong for us not to mention um, Pascal as well, Colm, you know, mm-hmm. uh, like that's a, it's weird because he's 27 years of age and he has all Ireland's and he's, you know, a big player, but it felt like a kind of defining day for him, a sense of I, I'm more than able to handle these occasions now and be one of the, the, you know, Con's not having his greatest game. Well, I'm around for the next mm-hmm. couple of years and I'm more than stood up kind of an afternoon. Yeah, and stand up he did. And you mentioned Con O'Callaghan, like if you were to tell me or the game we're keeping him was a two points in play or maybe two max for play you know you're really really happy with that but Pasquale was just he was electric and he was he was electric when Dublin really weren't playing that well in the first half I think that was the key himself and Coslo were really really good yes the space was there for them and if Mayo were looking back right now they're probably thinking you know should we play the sweeper should we have really tried to shore it up in that first half and protect because going into the game Joe, the one thing I was worried about was the lack of experience we had in our full back in particular and, and probably Cullum Reap as well not and played in front of a full house and crow park before so that's four of your, of your back seven if, if, if you like and that experience definitely showed I think as the game went on certainly to that third quarter but for best well yeah I think it was a big game for him I think he's big roots in Mayo I think his, his parents or his parents might be from, from Mayo so um, he was he was definitely up for it but he was electric but he's been threatening this probably for years and yeah. he's shown pretty glimpses for 10 minutes off the bench every now and again but it was if a player you fell maybe that Jim Gavin or Desi Farr wasn't going to fully trust from the start in a big big game but the way he flew out on yesterday and Ferris he took his chance brilliantly I feel a column across the last decade and, and you'd be one of them yourself in many ways mm. uh, there are freak athletes and then there's probably James McCarthy in, in some respects you've shared a pitch with him I mean here he is at 33 and I, I don't know if he understands the concept of tiredness but uh, it's not apparent he does Incredible, Joe. Um, I'm not going to lie, I've been looking at Dublin games through the championship this year and looking at McCarthy, I'm just wondering, is is, is there a year just gone there? You know, and maybe it's just the 
miss the games. Maybe he just didn't need to be James McCarthy of 10 years ago, but put him on the big stage when his team not needs him, knock out football, everything on the line. And he was just absolutely brilliant. Like, um, you know, I don't think Mayo never got to grips with him. He just set the tone. I mentioned at the start of the second half, talk about setting the tone for your team right there. And I think it's him that kicks the ball in as well for the goal. You know, obviously it turns out a bit lucky, but he was sensational. Yeah, it just what, what a footballer he is. And you're talking about men driving stand- standards like looks and like McCarthy. It's just sensational. Yeah. So I, I guess a final word on this, uh, Darren, I will move to the other games. Uh, like what was so apparent about this game of the three over the weekend is that this was the most open, there was the most kicking. Um, <laughs> I kind of hate myself for asking this question, but, but Colm alluded to it. Like, should Mayo have had a sweeper? Should Dublin have had a sweeper? Were they like both too open, really? No, you'd never be too open. Um, no, look... <laughs> I just think it was like the first half it was open there was kicking there was good scores but it was tight and it was just a case of Dublin started the second half and Mayo didn't Yeah, and maybe when you concede two, three points you have to learn to adapt on the pitch and drop a few bodies back just to stem the tide or something but up to then it was fine it was just one team started the second half and the other team didn't and before they knew it it was four points, five points, and they just could not get back into it. Um, like up to then, they would have been very happy. And I just do think it was one of them ones where at times you have to be able to adapt on the pitch. Mm. And Colm alluded to it there. It's quite an inexperienced Mayo backline now. And, you know, that's where look, they are in transition. They're, they've lost a lot of players over the last year or so. Um, and you look at the players Dublin had on the field yeah. and were bringing off the bench, it was experience followed by experience. And I think Mayo were probably just lacking that experience to go down injured, yeah. stop the game for a minute or two, and it just got away from them. And then after that, you're looking at damage limitation, but there's no point. You just have to keep going. Yes. Uh, final... In terms of like... Yeah, go on, we were, you know, Sorry, Joe, yeah. Like we're all one at the start of the year, what a Mayo team would look like. <laughs> big big game without Lee Geek and I know she won it and that's really when, when it really when it comes home to us you know a big game of Crow Park when you're looking for legs at the back when you're looking for man markers boys that can drive the ball out there in the second half when you're really up against it and Dublin are pressed up right against you you're looking for a Mullins to come out with the ball and Keegan simply didn't have them here saying that's unfortunately the reality for me I'll come forward we're not going to have them and that's it but that's yeah. what you saw the last day but I think the boys that have played I think crucially they'd be all the better for them I think that's the, the good thing going forward I think that experience will actually stand to them over the next couple of years Yes well you, you part answered what was going to be my final question on Mayo do you come mm-hmm. away from this season Colin feeling like they're quite a bit away from winning an All-Ireland or, or what's your general sense? Well Joe if you, if you want to look at it this way we got to a quarter final last year got beaten by Kerry by 8 points got to a quarter final this year got beaten by Dublin by 12 so if you're looking at it that way and we also lost to Cork and Common. At the minute, Joe, we're, we're, we're a bit away. There's no doubt about it because if you're stealing, if you can't get to Dublin and Kerry for 70, 75 minutes, if your stealing isn't taking you there, then you have a problem. And mm-hmm. um, we're getting maybe to 30, 40 minutes. That's not going to win you a big, big game. And we're, we're struggling in a lot of other games besides. And obviously getting beaten by teams that maybe we would be expecting to win as well. So going forward, yes, well, the experience will be better. You know, will we lose a couple of boys on top of that again? You know, probably won't know that over the next, until the next couple of months or so but I think overall when Kevin McStay looks at the year I think he'll reflect I think he'll just the way especially it finished I think he'll say it's a, it's a, it's a disappointing first year in charge OK short break we have other games to talk about Colin Boyle Darren O'Sullivan staying with us Gaelic football on off the ball with AIB proud sponsors of the GAA Senior Football Championship check out hashtag the toughest for more You're welcome back. Colin Boyle and Darren O'Sullivan are with us. We've talked Dublin Mayo. Let's talk Kerry. 218, Tyrone 12 points. It was 9 6 at half time, albeit Kerry felt um, more in control than that scoreline suggested. 
to get the ball rolling Darren Brian Dewar spoke afterwards and in effect he was saying that he felt Tyrone had none of their usual energy none of their usual intensity never got to the grips of the game at all and Jack O'Connor pretty interesting he referenced the defeat to Tyrone two years ago and he said that that Tyrone win against Kerry was on the basis of turnovers and goals and they are the two things that we have worked on a lot in my time in charge. I mean, first half alone, Kerry had 10 turnovers in their own half, scored off quite a few of them as well. Like, again, statement performance here akin to Dublin. Yeah, um, and I don't think he's wrong um, that they two years ago, three goals conceded. Um, I think one of the turnovers just stands out to me is Adrian Splen. He must have sprinted 70 yards back into his own half, got the turnover. Um, but Brian Dewar is right they didn't from, even in the first half Kerry always looked in control they always looked they looked more powerful they looked quicker they looked livelier um, going into a Saturday week very confident as the week went on I was getting a bit worried I was going through matchups um, but I think Kerry were just outstanding on the day um, they definitely proved me wrong I have to apologise to a few of them I was starting to, uh, <laughs> to question uh, a few bits and pieces but um we talked about it um, previous weeks about how to approach the season. Do you build into it? Do you try and peak? Do you just hit the ground running? And I was thinking, geez, I don't know how how can you peak if you don't. Dublin and Kerry seem like they've done that because um, Kerry obviously had a big win against Loud a couple of weeks back and we talked about it and we said, but how good are Loud? But no, like Kerry were outstanding in every aspect of the pitch the last day. I think Shane Ryan in goal didn't have it much to do but he's very commanding back there at the moment big communicator and in fairness and Jason Foley Paul Murphy and uh, Tom Sullivan the last day they were marking three exceptional forwards in the two Canavans and McCurry and they, they didn't get much of a sniff off him yeah. um, and then you have someone like Darren McConnor who and Jack Barry who look I, I think we all criticised him at different stages and doubted him and they're up against two two big men midfield two of the top midfield pairs around um, in Kilpatrick and um, geez, my head's gone blank Kennedy but, um, yeah. Kennedy and yeah. they stood up and Darren O'Connor not only the scores but the turn like turnovers Jack said it turnovers all over the field constant throughout and they can even afford Clifford to leave the shooting boots at home um, for a weekend um, but no very impressed with Kerry um, but I do think Tyrone the three games coming into it it took a bit of zip off him but at the same time I, how good are Tyrone call a spade a spade they beat a very poor Donegal team the week before they should have been beaten by West they, should, they could have very easily been out of the competition a couple of weeks ago yeah. um, so I think you do have to take certain bits into consideration but no Kerry's performance was was quality yeah, I think to be fair to you two, you weren't really buying the Tyrone hype I was trying to sell last week, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about recent All Ireland champions. Um, and there is a tradition in Tyrone of emerging at Crow Park and being um, their brilliant, mean best. And so I, I was leaning into, into that um, mythology almost, and, and not least against Kerry. But I suppose, Colm, the other side of the coin, which maybe is the one that's been borne out, is that this is a Tyrone side who came and won that All-Ireland, who lost, what, eight players then overnight, who didn't do anything last year and who were very patchy this year mm. uh, throughout. So then suddenly the likelihood of them pitching up in Crow Park is, is a touch more remote and so approved. Yeah, Joe, your your talk actually last week, you, you managed to convince me that Tyrone were going to win win <laughs> this game. So I was going with it all week after that. Um, but you're 100% right in everything you say. We, we were going off Tyrone of 2021. Can we finally see, are we going to finally see Tyrone 20, of 2021? But you mentioned the players you, that they've lost, McKenna and McShane in that. I know McShane has come on in the game, but he's very little training and done. And they were just nowhere near for me. Like it was very similar kind of first half to Mayo and, and, and Dublin and that they were they were obviously well in the game but I think the ease of, what, of which Kerry were getting their shots away like that would have been alarming to me in the throne dressing room at half time and you just knew if that was going to keep going at that rate that there was only ever going to be one winner and I mentioned or mentioned earlier on about Dublin and the throw in like straight away at the start of the second half Jeremy O'Connor gets up wins the throw in 
kicks it into Sean O'Shea, foul, free in, they win the next kick out, another score. Suddenly there's five in it. And like the Mayo Dublin game, in the blink of an eye, the game is really over. But it was just the intensity that Kerry bought. And you've mentioned, Jack O'Connor mentioned there about their structure, about how solid they've been. And Tyg Morley's probably taken a bit of stick this year along with the Kerry defence in the role he's played. Um, he played it brilliantly on Saturday. I think he got a lot of credit on the Sunday game, and rightly so. But from a player who's played that role quite a number of times where you're playing at six, but you're basically playing as a sweeper, you're, you're holding that position and protection full back line. You can only play that to what the players in front of you allow. So if they're not working hard, if they're not putting tackles in, if they're giving uh, time to players to get their head up and, and pick balls out inside, you're basically going to be a sitting duck. Yes. Or runner, runners runners coming through the middle, they pop balls around you. But the intensity and the way the carry forwards, midfield, the mid late sector in particular worked, it really made Morley's role easy on Saturday. Do you know, you know I, what I mean? I, I, I do. No, I do. And I, that is such a great point. And, uh, you know, for you to have played it, you'd have a, a great understanding of it. Because in some respects, I think GA and like one sweeper, it's kind of quaint to say that now, but like one sweeper or even in hurling, more so in hurling, like one sweeper should be an irrelevance. You should be able to kick the yeah. ball over a sweeper or evade a sweeper yeah. or, or puck a ball over a sleeper in your sleep if you're under no pressure. But if you're under a bit of pressure and half falling over and half just kicking it, then I would presume, Colm, a billion times easier for you to read where that ball's going. Oh, absolutely. And to be honest, Joe, a lot of the time as a sweeper, all you're trying to do is get in the eye line of the kicker. So if he looks up, he sees you blocking that space, then he might look, turn back, not take okay. on the kick. And your job is almost done in that sequence of play. You might actually end up pushing out in and taking a man. But like that, the last day, because Morley was protecting that D, he protected it very well, don't get me wrong. But the tackle and that was coming in from his middle eight players, like, you know, it just made his job so much easier. And he was there then when he was needed, when there was a chance of a thrown player breaking through, maybe untracked. He was in there to tidy that up, which is a job as well. Yes. But I thought they were just excellent through that whole sector. Did you feel on television when you might have, just by being in the right position, stopped about 45 kicks going into the likes of Darren O'Sullivan, but nobody gave you any credit? <laughs> yeah, as a sweeper, you only get um, you generally only get highlighted when you're not playing well. <laughs> if you're if you're not cutting out the balls, you know what I mean. You don't get the credit that uh, that the rest of them get. But uh, yeah, I uh, you the, the teammates know they appreciate it. I think that's the main thing. Yeah. Um, there is a moment, obviously, Darren, from the entire weekend, from the four games. And, and sorry, we will give McManus in particular some some due credit in a few moments. But like, there is a moment which people will remember in five years' time, ten years' time, and will be seen in the highlights reel when he does eventually retire, which will be many, many years from now. And it's Clifford doing his thing. Uh, Jack O'Connor uh, <laughs> talking about it. His perspective was the same as everybody. He saw it and he thought Clifford was going to get nailed by two Tyrone lads on the touchline and next thing goal. I think even Clifford thought he was about to get nailed by two Tyrone lads into the stand. Yeah, look, and that like I think they are the things that you want to see, whether it work works out or not. Yeah, I think people want to see a bit of ingenuity, something off the cuff, and I think that's something that's starting to lack in a lot of games. And the systems take away moments like this. And it, it isn't always about working out like that worked a treat. Went straight to Tony Brass and drew the man goal. Bang, we'll be watching this on repeat. But it was just somebody who was very comfortable with ball in hand and in his own game mm. and willing to be brave and try something. I think that's all we want. And in fairness to David, he's one of the few players probably in the game that would have the ability to pull it off, the ability to see it as well. Um, but like that, we're going to be talking about that for for ages but I think that's just what you want you want a bit of creativity a, a bit of boldness a bit of excitement a bit of something different um, and at times you know when the teams are so structured and so safe I think that that's the frustrating thing that we're actually losing out in the game at the moment but look when you see moments like that I think even the Tyrone crowd would acknowledge it was a, it was a moment of magic um, Look, to be honest, it's one of the ones that you're nearly half expecting at every game from him now at this stage. Mm. Um, I think Jack was nearly kind of half writing it off as if to say, you're sure he does that every week in training, what's new? But um, no, it was magic. And obviously the way it finished, um, Tony did really well. Um, like that got an impact off Tony. He was involved in both goals. Um, so it was um, it was brilliant because when the ball actually went to David, I was like, oh, Jesus, he's going to end up in the crowd here. 
but um, moment of magic. No, it's great. And look, you were a practitioner of it yourself. I presume nobody said to you with your Lee Sharp flicked goal in Crow Park back in 2011, <laughs> listen, less of the fancy stuff, kid. Catch the ball. <laughs> no, I think I think Galvin's word was word, Galvin's words were, "Oh, I wish I did that." <laughs> and she, Brian Sheehan still claims he meant the pass like that. But uh, no, like, but I think like you just want you want something a bit of different, ah, something completely. different all the time. It just that's what the game is about. No matter what sport, you need something different just to get everyone talking. So I think Darren, your yeah. goal that time, all you all you were missing was the Lee Sharp celebration on the on the corner flag, the bit of a dance on the corner jig. flag. He that, doesn't have the hips. Yeah. He doesn't have it. <laughs> no, the hips were gone at that stage. <laughs> um, so, Colm, is my sense from you two then? And this is like totally with the benefit of hindsight. It, it, it was hard to foresee it because much of the last couple of weeks was, well, let's see when Dublin are tested. Let's see when Kerry are tested. Is our sense now that Desi Farrell and Jack O'Connor, uh, for all the shadow boxing, mm. for all the talk, for all the guff week in, week out, all they did at the start of the year was circle the first weekend of July and they said, we're 99.9% going to be there no matter what. That's all we're worried about. That's all we're getting ready for. Because it, it kind of feels that way today, I have to say. Oh, 100% sure, yeah. And look, Dublin have somehow, in a new format, managed to cruise really to a semi-final, you know. But I think you're you're hugely right in what you're saying. I think Kerry are a small bit different in the fact that they probably thought they were heading for a playoff. And it was very interesting in Clifford's comments after the game. He said the boost they got when they came in from the Lau game and they heard Mayo after getting bet by Cork. And they knew they had an extra week to play with. So I think all that factors in as well. Yeah. But I think, yeah, I think teams next year will, will look at this format and the whole year and the whole you know I don't know how we're going to talk about the league next year because really when you look at it this year two two division one te- or two division two teams in the in the All-Ireland semi-final um, a team that nearly got relegated in Mana and, and a team that had a bad league in, in Kerry both in the in the two semi-finals yeah. so uh, yeah that's that's probably where the league is, is from now on but uh yeah, it'll it'll be interesting going forward how teams approach the championship. But it's all it's all about the group format and peaking and getting to a quarter final for yeah, sure. Yeah. Um Monaghan and Derry fans, this is not meant in a disrespectful way. We're going to come to Monaghan now in particular. Uh, yeah. an amazing game. But Darren, uh, based on the if they are the two statement performances of the weekend, who do you make favourites if it was between Kerry and Dublin? Not Dublin all day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I um I think Kerry would go in as favourites, um, but I think the edge that Dublin have over us, I think their bench is stronger. Yeah. Where I are you? Think, um, yeah. Yeah. Where are you, Colin, at the I, moment? I, I'm 100% on Darren at the bench. If it comes to the bench, that's where Dublin are looking like they have a bit deeper to go into. And when you're talking a game of inches, because realistically, lads, let's be honest, if Dublin and Kerry do meet in that final, and I know we probably shouldn't even be talking yes, about this just yet, but if they do, you're talking about a point or two swing either way and you're looking at that Dublin bench coming in and that could just be the difference. But when you have David Clifford and Sean O'Shea, you're not ruling Kerry out of it. It's true. So, look, that conversation's music to Monaghan ears. They um, <laughs> finished 14 points apiece with Darma. 17 of the 20 penalties were converted. you got to feel very sorry for Callum Comiskey missing not once, but twice. Um, I think maybe a lot of people now don't like that notion of the five having to go again because it does raise that distinct prospect of somebody missing twice. And maybe that is a, a bit much. But um, Monaghan, so uh, against her own... Uh, Conan Doherty tweeted this last uh, second O'Toole goal against Derry a last second O'Connell point against Kildare a last second McCarthy point and then against Armagh McManus and that is not to mention the last half a dozen league campaigns where they pull it out of the fire uh, so just extraordinary doing what they do and um, I mean you, you mentioned McManus at the start Darren came on scored four points like it, it did occur to me even with that free at the end I, I don't know how his hips are I don't know how his body is but they're like there's, there's half a chance that's his last ever kick from on him potentially if he puts that wide and honestly it was like you warming up for training he uh, I'll be honest it's actually hard to, to talk about man and like you, know, you, can, you can't buy character and this team has in in abundance. And in fairness, McManus, you, you're not going to find another McManus around the place. Um, even the way he won the free, um, I think everybody in the crowd knew this free is going short. Who are they looking for? Mm. They're looking for McManus. He managed to get regal free, 
and the cuteness uh, I think Cullum said it on in the game that he manufactured it he did he was testing the hamstrings or the legs were flicking left right and centre <laughs> Well, the, it was effortless. And I think the first free he actually got, I was directly behind it. He was only on the pitch a couple of minutes. And the ball actually left the eye line because the, the roof in front of me blocked it. And the way it came over. But just his ability to kick scores, his reading in the game when he comes on, because he's not staying inside and just looking for scores. He's coming out. He's dictating the place. He's getting abused off every player that goes near him. He's phenomenal. Honestly, I... I it's it's actually hard to think of words to keep praising, but yeah. they do it up time and time again, and he's to the fore all the time. Yes, there's not many teams when Marino Neal scores that kick column who would stay that calm. They've been there so often, but even so, like that was super impressive the way they handled that free from when they won it and knew they had to work it in closer. Yeah, John. You mentioned the last dance earlier on and uh, well, the one game in that, I don't know, was it Detroit and there were a couple of seconds left on the shot clock and they're saying, don't let Johnson get the ball. And that's exactly what it was. It was like the last day, don't let McManus get the ball and he gets the ball. But you're, you know, in that situation and you're looking for, I'm looking for a man's point of view, like where McManus is going, he's running towards the D, he's running against the hill, mm. or sorry, the breeze into the hill there's two or three Armagh bodies converging on him and Roy Grugan just pulls across the hips and it's such a cheap foul to give away at that stage of the game. He's probably, after giving away a five out of six shot into a nine, a nine probably an eight or nine out of ten shot for McManus. It was it was cruel, really. It was cruel. It was a cruel way to bring the game to extra time, but it was really poor from Grugan at that stage, but brilliant by McManus. You'd have great sympathy for Armagh in that to lose on penalties in that manner is brutal. And particularly for Comiskey but I, there's just a frustration with them I think this year I, uh, one they had a couple of opportunities to take goals there was the Grugan mm. chance where he fisted over and I, you know doesn't hop that ball there was a side foot into the far corner very much on and then probably the, when Soupy Campbell's running in he gives it to Turbot but I mean another hop himself and he blasts it towards goal just you know that's a great chance but but more than anything it's on GAA go Aaron Kernan described it Darren as you know their mentality is a stay in the game mentality it's not a go out and win the game mentality and you look at the forwards they have ball carriers they have brilliant kickers they have target men 14 points in what the guts 90 minutes I don't know like there's more in them surely than 14 points there is 100% more in that game should have it could have been over at half time um all they had to do was approach the game with a positive attitude and a, we're going to go out, we're going to dictate the pace of this game. We talked about Tyrone earlier, three hard games in a row. Same with Monaghan, with an ageing squad. And if Monaghan wanted the game to be played at any pace, I'm at it for him. The forwards they have, like Rian O'Neill kicked his first point from play, which potentially and probably should have been the winner. Outstanding point. Yeah, He spent, he spent most of the game around midfield waste of time and I think uh, I talked to a few of my fans on the way out and there's serious frustrations I, I, I can't understand a team with that potential that many ball winners that can win a ball inside um, and kick scores and they don't kick the ball um, I have zero sympathy for them uh, absolutely zero I don't like penalties um, I do think it's unfair going around the second round for the players but I have no sympathy for them being out. They don't deserve to be true. They don't deserve any sympathy in my eyes. Um, we talked about a fortune favours a brave. And if you have a group of footballers like they have and you go out for containment or to just get by, you deserve exactly what you get. And it sounds a bit harsh, but like what are you supposed to say? You, you name out, you could name out. 10 or 15 of their players and they're all top quality players one of the turning points I actually thought in the first half was Campbell actually went through and he was running for so long I think he got confused about what to do put it over go for goal he ended up going out for 45 but I think he just got addled himself but I was there going chance after chance they're creating but then they sit back when they're on top and look they are they're very frustrating um, and I know um, McGinney had a bit of a cut off the referee after about certain things but I, I don't think he can have anything to complain about, to be honest. Um, they're their, they were their own downfall. And um, yeah, they, they don't deserve to be in the semi-final. 
Well, not least when uh, I, I understand his point about the at a time but I mean the Sean Jones black card was a gift and you're, you're playing against 14 men for 6-7 minutes of extra time and again that containment aspect kicks in Colm you were here in studio the day they were relegated Armagh and uh, you could almost copy and paste what Darren said then to now really yeah un- unfortunately so um, I would be hugely frustrated if I was an Armagh supporter Um I didn't see the game live, Joe. I, I watched it back this morning and obviously heard an awful lot about it during the week, or sorry, over the weekend and tweets. And after about 15 minutes, I thought, geez, you know, this is not as bad as what, as what I thought. You know, our man trying to move the ball, yeah. you know, but minute by minute, slowly but surely, uh, they broke me down. And by the end, I, I was completely broken by them. And the frustrating thing about our man, I know the talk should be Monon, and it is really, but the frustrating thing about our man is every now and again, they just tease you with what they can do yeah. with a couple of long balls and it's like yeah this is what we can do but we're not going to do this now for another half an hour you know and it's so so frustrating and you know maybe we give them too much credit maybe we think they're actually better than they than they are you know maybe that's the other side of it but I think there's certainly more in that Kieran McGinley spoke a few weeks ago about the empty vessels after the Galway game you know and he was almost trying to make us believe that Armagh aren't playing defensive football which they come, they clearly are our eyes aren't lying to us and they're not playing to their strength show mm-hmm. and unfortunately Darren mentioned there about the containment they have got exactly what they have deserved because they weren't brave enough to go and try and win the game yeah he was talking about you you and Broly <laughs> yeah. big two um, <laughs> we're, we're, no comments <laughs> we're, de- we're dead against the clock here my apologies to Cork and Derry fans we'll, we'll revisit this in more depth not least from a Derry point of view as they have a semi-final against Kerry to play uh, Paddy Andrews said pre-game it was interesting yesterday on the radio show he said very similar styles ways of going about things Derry just that bit better at it so I'd expect them to pull away as the game goes on and it was it was kind of that you know game started with Cork having possession for three four minutes Derry had their first score after ten minutes I think Cork had three points by 30 minutes it was that kind of an affair really and um, Derry are just that bit further along Darren we were impressed with them like they haven't loved Crow Park over the last couple of years as good as they've been in Ulster were you impressed with them w- with a view to Kerry in the semi-final I, won't, I wasn't um, it was it was quite a dull game to watch they always looked comfortable that they were going to win it but I wouldn't say I was impressed look they have Individuals that are very impressive, but if I was, if I'm watching that purely from a Kerry point of view, I'm looking at it going on that performance. Kerry won't be worried. Um, having said that, look, McGuigan had probably one of his quieter days, similar to Conor Callan and David Clifford. The shooting boots um, weren't done by him, um, but they weren't scoring enough. I, I, to be honest, if Cork had Hurley, a fit Brian Hurley on the pitch, it would have been interesting. Um, would have caused him a few more problems but I wasn't that impressed by them um, for that game I don't think they will be as flat against Kerry but watching that game i I'd be honest I got more and more confidence about Kerry Yeah Colm Joe uh, I landed Croker yesterday just for the throw in of this I can safely say it was the most boring game of football I've ever seen it was <laughs> <laughs> mind numbing stuff okay. mind numbing at one stage I actually forgot where I was that I was in Cobar <laughs> watching the game because I was just daydreaming away uh, had you taken any substances or <laughs> <laughs> no there was one phase of the play Joe, in the second half which just summed up where this game was and probably where a lot of modern day football was there was a, there was a tur- like the game there was no atmosphere in the crowd No, there was a, tur- there was a tur- Cork turned the ball over inside their own 45 and there was almost a bit of a buzz and you almost set up in your chair and said Jesus yeah I'm at a game in Crow Park here couple of Cork players sprinted forward Maguire's on the ball and the, he just turns around and put, hand passed the ball 10 yards back, square, back the way and the counter attack is dead and there was such a groan in the crowd even the Derry fans were groaning and I think they just wanted to see a bit of excitement it was just I don't think Roy Keane will be coming back anytime soon to oh, watch another game to be honest with you right. I, he was there was he? He was there, yeah. I don't know if he stayed on for Mayo Dublin. I hope he did to see some proper action. But um, Derry weren't very impressive, Joe. I think they'd be better in the semi final. I think they played to a level where it was just going to be good enough to win. Yeah. I would expect them to be good enough, but I can't see them any way in which to be Kerry, to okay. be honest. Okay. Fellas, that was exceptionally good. Thank you so much. 
Thanks, guys. Thanks, Joe. Darren Sullivan and Colin Boyle with us. And our Gaelic football on Off the Ball is in partnership with AIB, proud sponsors of the Senior Football Championship. You can check out hashtag the toughest for more. Gaelic football on Off the Ball with AIB, proud sponsors of the GAA Senior Football Championship. Check out hashtag the toughest for more.